أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you, thank you so much, Ziad, for this introduction. Thank you for inviting me here. It's an honor for me to be here. And as you said, my first relationships with the United States of America were not, in fact, with the immigrant community or the Muslims. All what I heard was about the African American struggle, and of course, the story of Malcolm X, because he visited my family. I was young; I was three years old, but he visited my father. And straight after he passed away, uh, uh, 48 years ago, uh, my father sent straight away, just a few days after it happened, uh, the money to help his wife, Dr. Bedi Shabazz, to come and to perform pilgrimage with the family. So they did it a few months after, when you were still uh, not born and, and, and you performed it first. As, first in fact, as me, when I was young, I did exactly the same as my mother. So my first pilgrimage was unborn uh, child. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So let me come to uh, uh, the talk and, and to start with some uh, uh, elements as an introduction. Because the discussion this evening is, and, and can I ask you something? Even if you like something, you just don't clap. You just think about it. Because it's a commemoration, and I think that uh, all what you do here, what I'm trying to do is just to enter into a personal experience to try to get the essence of something which is an identity that is moving. Transformations mean the different steps through which he went. As you read the memoirs, when you try to understand his life, you get a sense that there is something that happened here. And I think that it's a mirror. At the end of the day, we have to come back to us. We are talking about him in order to get a better understanding of who, what we are trying to do with our own life. It's just not to remember him, but to get the message from his life. So it's a question of message and a question of teaching. It's a question of trying to understand. When someone, and, and, and this is just as an introduction, three points. The first is when you, you try to, to understand a life and, and you try to understand, in fact, what makes someone enter Islam, convert into Islam. And to come to something which is a deep conversion. Conversion means what? It means exactly what you have when the Prophet is saying, talking to Allah, Ya Muqallib al Kulu. Or you who turns the heart in one way or in another. And he's asking him, as he's already a Muslim, Thabbit Qulubana ala deen. Make our heart first into your religion. Meaning what? Anything could happen. Anything could happen. You can be a believer today and forget everything about Islam tomorrow. But you can be very far today and become a Muslim tomorrow. What makes you enter Islam? Which type of conversion and change in your identity? And this is where these transformations are so important. Because there is something which is important very often, and this is wrong by the way, very often when people are talking about someone who converted to Islam, they ask her or him to forget about her or his past, which is wrong. You will understand the end of Malcolm X if you understand the beginning. You will understand the whole journey, because this is it. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un We belong to him when we come back to him, means think about the first steps in order to understand the last. And I think that this is important why, because this is where he himself started this journey with something which was very important. All what he said about the fact that he understood the power of psychological colonization is coming from the beginning. It's coming from the first steps. He understood how powerful this culture could be if you don't get a sense of what are your roots and what is your path. So it's all about who I am, where I'm headed, and I will come to this, and I think that this is 
important in our discussion uh, today when it comes to understanding uh, the, the, the perception, the feeling that there was humiliation, discrimination, and it was a process of coming from the margin to the mainstream. And this is something that also is important because there are steps, is how the people are negating your presence. It's a question of negation. Who are you? You are nothing. And the second step is resisting. I'm not going to accept what you want to do with me. I'm going to resist. So from being nothing to resisting, and then to come on some, something which is the last step, which is liberating yourself from who you want me to be, your own perception. These three steps are important. You might have uh, uh, read Nietzsche's philosophy. And there is something which is quite interesting in Nietzsche's philosophy. He said, you know what, you have to go through three steps to get freedom. The first is to understand first that at the very beginning you are like a camel. You bear what the people are putting on you. Second, you become a liar. No, oh, I'm not going to let you do it. I'm going to resist. And third, you, come, you become a child. Free. Innocent. Come to Islam now. And you have these three steps, and this is something which is important, it has to do with your identity. In the nafs al amaratun bisu, the nafs is pushing you towards something which is bad. So you are under the, the, the heavy lot of oppression, self-oppression, inner oppression, intimate oppression. Amaratun bisu is self, the self. The second is in nafs al amara is this amaratun in nafs al lawana resisting. It's a struggle. And the last step is what? In nafs al at peace with oneself. Three steps, and you have to go through this. You come to Malcolm X's life, and you get it. You will see the steps. You will see that there is something which: who is defining me? How am I going to resist? What is freedom? What is freedom? What is revolution? And in fact, revolution has nothing to do with who you are striving against. It's from where you are striving. It's from where you are struggling. Am I struggling against you in your, on your terms, on your parameters, or mine? Are you, am I resisting you because you put me in a situation where I feel that I am on the margin because you are in the main, on the mainstream? Or am I coming on my own terms resisting who you are and what you are doing? Which kind of power you have on me? And this, once again, is the central transformation. What is also important, in, even with Muslims now, and American Muslims and African American Muslims, there is something that uh, too many of us are buying too quickly. Is there is perception that what is coming from Malcolm X, uh, Al Hajj Malik Al Shabazz, is the opposite of what is said and done out of the figure of Dr. Martin Luther King. And that's not a problem. That's not only wrong, it's wrong on both sides. It's wrong with what is said about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, as if he was not advocating resistance and saying, you are going to resist, you are not going to be happy with what you are doing. And you want struggle, you want to fight, we'll be here. He said that, he did it. And Malcolm X was not all about violence. That's not true, you know, it's only revolutionary, it's the, the bad side of the Muslim resistance, and this is to make him outside the American narrative. Right. The, the American narrative is non-violent Christian resistance. Malcolm X is a bit outside. He's not really one of us. Or he's going to be one of us or within us to show how much we are defining ourselves against violence and uh, 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 you know the, 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 the opposite of non-violent resistance. And I think that uh, all the narrative and, and get it right. There is something which is happening in this country which will have a tremendous impact if you are not serious about it. It's to make Islam and the Islamic presence in this country alien to the American narrative. And you can still, you know, talk about 
beginning and expose Malcolm X and uh, Hajmai Sabah's act. Yes, he was an American, but still the, the dark side of the resistance. And I think that we can't accept this, and this is wrong. This is not true in historical terms, in scientific terms, and when you read and when you understand what he was saying. And to focus on the first part of his life and not the last two, two and a half years, this is something which is tricky and sometimes ideologically oriented. There is something which is a diversion from the essence of uh, uh, his life uh, and the, the, the third steps that we can see. And once again, there are more than that, but still, uh, just to make it short to this evening, uh, just summarizing and say, okay, let us try to understand the three steps uh, uh, as uh, uh, revealing his own journey towards uh, uh, this res the, the resistance and also the, 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 the final message that he had. He said something that was repeated by Nelson Mandela uh, later, he said, you know what, at the end of the day, the means of resistance are decided by the oppressor. You decide how we are going to resist at the beginning. And then if you are really free from the oppressor, you decide the means. But the starting point of the resistance process is you decide. And you are going to be the one if you are using psychological violence, of uh, the whole system, discrimination, uh, on the job market, and alienation, of course, that the people are going to uh, put themselves in a situation where they choose the means that were decided before by uh, the oppressors and uh, uh, the people who are humiliated. Let me uh, just start now with the first step. There is something which is very simple, but at the same time quite important. And especially in that, because what we see with young in the inner cities, African American, uh, Muslims, and, and, and by the way, people of other faiths, is very often the way that they don't get something which is very deep is that the way they resist is decided by the way they are pushed to resist. And sometimes they are part of the system. When you come with a TV program and you put someone who is shouting and, and being violent, in fact, this is very useful. This is the ideal uh, enemy, just look, this is it. And I think that these steps should be understood and we have to analyze this. The first step coming from the margin, it's the feeling of humiliation. And this is very clear in what he said to Alex Halle in his memoir. The way he was talking about the first steps and, and he was trying to, you know, humiliated by the white to become like a white. Threaten his hair, trying to get a, a girl, a white girlfriend, <laughs> add these drugs, alcohol. In fact, this is the deep alienation. This will be in his mind till the end. That at one point in his life, he tried to be like them. He tried to use, even though he was not, he tried to, to enter into the system. This is why all this business about integrate has to be questioned. Anyone who's coming to you and say, integrate, say, what do you mean? <coughs> integrate to what? And who are you to tell me that I have to integrate? Just <laughs> think about it. The second step, so see, this is the first step, and we see this in his life, and then he was jailed in, in, in 46. And this is also something which is part of the whole journey, uh, when he was, he was jailed, and as much as he tried for a while within the system to find his way, to act as them, to just be the, 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 the not a white, but with the white values is just to show how much he, he was able to make it. And then he ended up in jail. And in jail, there is something completely different that, is ha that happened. Is in fact, in jail is us versus them. Their system 
put me in jail. So it was how now you define yourself. So it's a question of identity that sometimes you define your identity, you know, you try to be like your presence. And then when it doesn't work, you try to be exactly the opposite of your presence or the dominant system. And please, as much as I'm saying this about him in the past, never forget all this now in your society. Because if you are true to this struggle, it's not just to make him acceptable by the American establishment. That's right. I'm sorry, what I'm hearing sometimes is people talking about Malcolm X by saying, oh no, he was nice, he was not, you know, he was one of us, and to make him acceptable for the establishment is not to be true to his message. He didn't want to be accepted, he wanted to be respected in his own terms. Which means this is what it means to be a human being. Because if you are talking about democracy, you are talking about human dignity, you are talking about civil rights, let us come to talk about the real issues. And the real issue is not to be like you, it's not to be and to resemble you, it's not to enter into the system, it's to question the system. The last three years of his life was all about we are carrying on the struggle on, in new terms. And when he wrote the last letter that he sent to my father, this was the last letter on his typewriter, uh, typewriter what he was saying, saying, they are going to kill me, that now I understand the true Islam. And the true Islam is our own terms, not what they want us to be. So this is something which is essential in, in the second step, which is when he was in jail, and he, it was clear that it was their system putting me in jail, I, it was the us versus them. And he, at that time, encountered the nation of Islam. And the nation of Islam was, was in the embodiment of this message. They are white, you are black. They are the oppressors, you are the, uh, the people who have to be... They are the devil, you are the son of God. You, because you are black. Which is in, in this understanding something which is in Islamic terms completely wrong. That's not the way Islam is looking at it, but this is the way his own psychological and, and personal experience was very much in tune with this message. He needed it at that time. It was the right message for him to become somebody against the system, against them. So when he was in jail, uh, he started reading and he started getting this message and being involved. And uh, once again, the whole understanding of him being Malcolm X, as opposed of being Malcolm Little. But you know, Malcolm X, when afterward he became in Hajj Malik al Shabbat, something which is a deep understanding of his own evolution in identity. Because Michael, uh, Malcolm Little means you decide my name in history. I'm Little because this is your choice. But when I'm saying Malcolm X, I'm still saying I'm ignorant of my past that you modified, that you oppressed. X is still a definition and the unknown towards you is not me. Me is Al Hajj Malik al Shabbat. Malcolm X is a negative definition of my identity. Negative definition of my identity is still against you. It's not in my name. So the names here are very important when I say Malcolm X is still, I'm struggling against you. It's this negative way of dealing with identity, with his own identity. And it's essential, it's critical as to the evolution. Uh, later, when he was talking about the story, the memoir, he talked about the story where a white woman, a white girl, was supporting him and he was saying, no way, because you are white. It's not possible for you to support a black man or a black striker. And then he recalled, he said, I regret. I regret, and he said, I'm happy now to be free from this, 
because it's two years I, it lost. It cost me two years, this mistake, this big mistake of thinking of me as a black against the white, as Malcolm X against the dominant system. He used the term free because he was physically in jail and psychologically in jail. The jail of the dominant. We decide for you who you are. And this is what the whole rhetoric the whole understanding of the nation of Islam, and once again we have to be very careful, it's not black and white. There are many things that are important in the way you resist. The fact that you have a second step of a negative identity, it's good if it's a step. The negative identity is necessary. Say, okay, of course I'm going to be someone against you if you are humiliating me. The point is, you should go a step forward. You should go beyond this. It's, I'm not going to accept you defining me. Because at the end of the day, what Islam is asking you is not to be the object of your perception, is to be the subject of your own history. Which is a shift. But you need to go through this. You need to understand this. And this is why, as Muslims and as human beings, you understand the meaning of your own, our own history. Everything is necessary. And if you can only say this afterward, after you say, Adar Allah. Allah knew it, He wanted this to be, and there is a reason. I did not understand the reason at that time, now I can understand. And He said it Himself, it cost me 12 years, but the 12 years was necessary for the last 3 years of His life. And this, once again, it's uh, uh, an important uh, second step in, in his transformation came the last one and this is also something which is as I told you the first one was in Nafs in Amara where you are under the heavy uh, uh, challenge and, 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 and oppression and then in uh, Lawan you are struggling he was becoming a lion in jail because I'm not going to let you do that. And then there is a step. What Nietzsche was talking about is a child. What in Islam we're talking is inner peace. It is the self-defining uh, him or herself. And this is the way he... Uh, um. There is something that started in, in 63 with all what he heard about what was going on within the nation of Islam with Elijah Muhammad. And I'm not going to come to this discussion because we don't have time for it, but it started. And when he started to give and to, to talk to Alex Halle, who is heard when they were, he was writing, he said, if I'm still alive when this book comes out, it will be a miracle. What does it mean? He knew. He knew that his own change was the true revolution. The true revolution was not the fall, but not to be aggressive with the system. The true revolution is when you get out of the system and you talk from where you want to be. This is the revolution. In philosophical terms, it is the Copernican uh, uh, revolution. It is not to talk from the way you are perceived, but the way you are defining, from where you are defining yourself. And this is what happened. It happened when he started uh, uh, distancing himself from the nation of Islam and uh, he performed. So the discussions that he had first here in the United States were with people who were not happy with the nation of Islam and, and, and told him, you might be wrong. You need to meet some people, you need to... to and this is where he wanted to perform pilgrimage. And pilgrimage you know, once again, you can just sit here and think pilgrimage is just a, a physical journey. I'm sorry. For anyone who is faithful to what Al Hajj, Al Hajj, Malik Shabazz was, and is for us, is to understand the very essence of a pilgrimage. The pilgrimage is the true transformation, conversion of the self and the heart. And this is what happened. You know what happened when he first arrived in Saudi Arabia? He was nobody. <coughs> Sit down, hey, why? Are you, are you a Muslim? He came with, you know, as was said, hundreds of people, thousands of people listening to him. 
he arrived in Saudi Arabia, sit down, wait four days. You're nothing. And for someone who is experiencing pilgrimage, it's a good teaching for the self. You were proud at the limit of being arrogant. Now it's pilgrimage. It's fun to get humility. And this is what he got. And then he, had, he was held by people, he was received afterward, he was acknowledged as uh, 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 Malcolm X, Malik Shabet. And he performed, and what he saw there is millions of people, thousands of people, all equal, white, black, based on one thing. The oneness of God makes you all equal. The true message of Islam. And Tawheed is the first principle and the first answer to any type of racism. If you belong that there is only one God, no racism. One humanity and equality. This is it. This is what he got from this experience. So from this experience he understood, and he said it when he came back, that he realized that there was something completely wrong. I don't belong to my color. I belong to my principles. And my principles are coming from the only one God that I worship. So this personal experience was important. And uh, he came to understand something. Among his signs is the fact that he created uh, uh, the sky, the heavens, and, and the earth, and the diversity of your colors and your languages. And by the way, you know, what was important for him when he arrived in Saudi Arabia, he came as an American speaking English. He was unable to speak Arabic. And when you come, it's, you know, American. Thank <laughs> you. come to Saudi Arabia, you cannot just utter a word in Arabic, sit down. <laughs> It's an experience. It's a very deep experience. This experience when you don't know the language and you're not even acknowledged as one of us. So this is something which helped him to go through his conversion. If not, why would he talk about it? Talk about this very, very, very short but so deep experience of not being acknowledged as a Muslim by Muslims not knowing the language of Islam as perceived by Muslims, and then say, okay, now welcome, you will enter now. This is a reconversion. Now we are coming to the center, one God and one humanity. When he came to this, and, and this is uh, also uh, important at the center, is what I would say is the last experience of reconciliation between the principles and his tribe, what he understood out of this experience as in Hajj Malik al Shabazz. And understanding that it might be, after all this, that the first enemy that he had, coming also from the nation of Islam, and he repeated this afterward, was his potential on arrogance. And, and, and take it as it is. When we sprout, you resist humiliation. Sometimes the way you might be sure that you are on the right side, you can end up being arrogant. And worshiping something that was so important after, afterward is you have to struggle for justice, you should not worship justice. So this is why when you said compassion, it's an important word. Forgiveness, Rahman, is also a very important word that uh, made at the end the message that we had from the Islamic tradition was all the message that even Dr. King had very, very close and very, but still, in resisting terms, understanding the very meaning of self-defense, and also the necessity to carry on the struggle. So, what also is important is that when he came back after his pilgrimage, he, he traveled a lot. 
And it's quite interesting to, to look at, he went twice to Africa and twice to Europe. So this divide between, you know, Western countries and African countries, he went to and he met with people, people who were leftist, communist, he put himself on that side. When he was asked about socialism, he said, is it good for black people? He said, oh, yes, I am. Meaning that still here, the prism through which he was looking at the world was still the black resistance. But the black resistance not as something which has to do with blackness. It has to do with justice and equal dignity. And this is a very essential point. From, from blackness as the final goal and using the black resistance as a goal which is beyond blackness, which is human dignity, equality and justice. So to understand my struggle is but a means towards something which is beyond that. One God, one humanity. Meaning that now I can work with the white people, the black people, the Latinos, with the Asian people. The only thing which matters is truth and justice. And he said it when he was talking about uh, his understanding and the truth no matter who tells it. Which is the starting point of and for truth no matter who tells it. Is this exactly what Islam is all about? This is the true understanding of Islam and for justice no matter who it is for or against. This is the point that we have in, the, in Islam. Black or white, poor or rich, that's not the point. Justice is justice for all. Even in the Quran, we have that at that point, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was struggling against some Jewish tribes, and the Quran is telling him about one Jew that wa who was innocent. The Quran is saying the Jew is innocent and the Muslim is guilty. So you can't, in the name of your religion, say who is right and who is wrong. It's not my community right or wrong. It's right when you are right. I'm going to stand up if you are wrong. And you have it. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْبَحُوا بَيْنَكُمَا فَإِن بَلَعْ إِذَّهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَمْرِينَ When two groups of believers, believers, not, not non-believers or not kuffar, no, believers, are struggling, you have to make peace among them. And if there is one which is transgressing, you have to resist. Stand up. So this is the message. You stand up against the injustice. It's not a, you know, it's not a non-violence, peace and love business. <laughs> it's peace and love with justice. Give me justice, I will love you. Don't give me justice, I will resist you. And love is going major. Can you love an unjust? You can respect him, but you have to resist his injustice or injustice. This is, this is the message. And this is coming from all what he said at the end. But to come with the message that at the end he opened up and was not advocating resistance, that's wrong. It's exactly the wrong message that sometimes is given now here in this country about Dr. King. Right. It's all about love. Yeah. So the people who are oppressing are always, always have two goals. First, be aggressive, it's good for us. As long as you are aggressive and violent in a way which is decided by the oppressor, we decide who you are. Go, and we can even give you all the media. Go and speak, say whatever you want. It's good for us. And if you are not like this, just become non-violent and invisible. So it's between non-violent invisibility or aggressive violent speeches. In between, this is where you define. The two extremes are defined. This is what is the psychological colonization. Anyone who's coming to me now and talking about uh, 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 Al-Hajj Shabazz as, you know, he was at the end, peace, good, and you know, peace. Peaceful, yes. Good, yes. But proud and ready to resist. The, 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 the struggle is not, is not over. Even if you have the first African-American president, I'm sorry. Don't take the symbol for the reality. 
It might be that the symbol is hiding the reality. That still injustices are the reality, the reality in this country. So some symbols are used, misused. And we have to be very cautious with this. So, what he also was getting out of this, and I will come to my conclusion here, is two things that are also coming from the very essence of the Islamic message. And once again, if we are true with the last three years, and by the way, we are very absent from the movie in 92. Very, the, the, the last two years were not there. Not enough. When, in fact, it is said something that he repeated about human dignity, human rights. And when he is saying, you know what, I was a black Muslim, now I am a Sunni Muslim. A Sunni Muslim, is, a black Muslim is qualifying the fact that you are Muslim through your color. The Sunni Muslim is the tradition, is the principle. And this is who he was. So when he was talking about, I am a Sunni Muslim, it means I am come back to the central and, and fundamental principles of Islam. And the first one, when he was talking about human dignity, what is this message? This is the true message of Islam. We gave dignity to human beings. This is Islam and this is what he was saying. I'm not going to give up on dignity. One. Second, as a Muslim, and this is also why he was talking about brothers and sisters and coming from within the community. Al Hajj Malik al Shabazz was a Muslim. And he was talking from within Islam. And he understood and he repeated this, and especially in one of the letters that he wrote Inna akramakum عِنْدَ Allahi atqahum. We give dignity to human beings, and what he was saying is that the, the more, the, 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 the highest, the best one among you in matter of dignity is the more God conscious. This God consciousness is very important. So it has to do with faith, it has to do with religion, it has to do with principles. But what is very important here is, in fact, by coming back to himself, the true revolution, as I said, helped him to come from his Muslim identity as the universal message of Islam. So it's from where he was that he was able to translate this in universal values. So the universal values are not coming by not being someone. The paradoxical dimension here, he was able to speak about the universality of our common values by putting himself at the center of the Islamic message. I am a Muslim, and these are the universal values that we are sharing. Human dignity, justice, freedom. And this is where he was starting to work with people in London, in France. In, he went first from, in France first once, and then he was banned from there the second time. But he went first there. And then he was also dealing with people in Africa, understanding something which is essential now. You who are oppressed in the United States of America, who you are humiliated in this country, who you are in the margin, who you are not acknowledged as equal citizens, get it right. If you are not understanding that your struggle is the same as the struggle of all the oppressed people around the world, you are not going to get it. That's just a nationalistic. So once again, the powerful are deciding for you which kind of struggle. Just struggle for the black people in the United States. Be happy. That's not the point. The real struggle is an international struggle and getting the people from all over the world is the resistance of all the oppressed people, not because they are oppressed, but because they are striving for the human dignity. It's not about us. And get it, the true transformation here is to say to the United States of America, racism is not a black business. Racism is a universal challenge and a universal struggle. And we'll do it with the white, and we'll do it with the Latins. Because one of the things that he got out of this experience is, who is dividing you? 
While you as black, you are not able to deal with white, you are not able to deal with Latinos, you are not able to deal with other minorities. You know why you can't do this? Because you are described as minorities and you accept it. And he said it. He said, and this is just when I read this, just this is it. We are not a minority. Our message, we are a minority if we count the people of color. But if we count the people of principles, we are a majority. It's crossing the board. And this is what he said, we are not a minority. And we are not struggling for ourselves. We are struggling for the sake of humanity. If you are able to look at the oppressor and to look at him or her, and the system is said to him or her or the whole system, you know what? At the end of the day, my struggle is for your own sake. I'm helping you. This is the Islamic message, the Christian message, this is the message of all the spiritualities, but you said it from where you are, by acknowledging and accepting the fact that, and not accepting, because once again it's not, it has nothing to do with acceptance, by assertiveness, being assertive from uh, the point and, and from where you are. And this is once again when he wanted to start, and this was said, and I think it's so important, to listen to what was said when he wanted to uh, set this organization of Afro-American unity. Afro-American unity, it's, it's the real message here. It's, it's not about you know, uh, having a narrow understanding of what it means to be a Muslim. It's what it means to, to get this kind of unity based on principles. So my conclusion would be four main points here that we need to, to get as a message for our time. You know, 48 years later, later, and dealing with people who, in this country, by the way, the state of birth of this country is not good. <laughs> it's a sad situation. This country is highly Lots of things that are based from corruption to discrimination to racist to, to populism. Some of the people who are at the top of this country are populist and racist. And some are making money and they don't care about human dignity. When you know that some people in this country have been in jail for four years, five years, and they have done nothing, and you go and you teach and you lecture the world about democracy and human dignity and say, you know what, we have the first African-American president, thank you. That's not what we want. So in the name of the universality of the, 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 the principles, I think that uh, what is important is, through the three stages, steps, is to know who you are. This is what he, and, and in my reading of his life, it's important who you are. It's uh, where do you come from. It's also very important. So never, never, never neglect uh, Malcolm X's past. We have to study this. It's important. It's it's a, it's it's a teaching. It's a lesson. And then uh, also where you are headed. Who you are. Where do you come from? Where you are headed? And the true revolution is from where you speak. The true revolution in psychological terms, in political terms, and in uh, cultural terms. From where it's a cultural resistance, by the way, as well. And I think that this is also important. The second thing that I want to say about his life is very often it's a neglected life. We are not teaching enough about this life because. We accept too quickly, as I said, the fact that he was passionate, sometimes aggressive, sometimes having words of violence. And I think that we have to put all this in. It's very important. You know, when you think about someone like Mandela, what was done with his figure? You know how much he was 
You know, he was a bit teaching Bible, so he is still, I say, well, you are not going to. You know, you know, resisting is a necessity, is a human obligation, is a duty. But at the same time, he said, I changed the way I was looking at the means. But still, the means could change the ends remain, the purpose and the goals remain. And I think that this is where we need to get a comprehensive understanding of Malika Shabbat's life. It's, it's very important to have this, all this dimension, and not to neglect, and not to make him acceptable by the way you know, the narrative is put now. I think that this is also something which is, would be, in fact, the continuation of the psychological colonization, making acceptable. And I think that we have to resist this. Last thing which was important uh, also is uh, uh, resistance and reform. In fact, you know, if you read all his life, and, and, and this is why, for example, in your country these days, it's not a good term to speak about jihad. <laughs> you have some dirty terms in American. And some Muslims are accepting this. I say, no, don't speak about jihad. And I think that not only we have to use jihad, but we have to give the right definition. Jihad is two things. is resisting injustice and reform. Society. It's two things, it's not only resisting, and this is why the, the, the three steps that I was talking about are so important, resisting and performing, and this is what he wanted with the new organization, with the, the, the uh, Muslim class, all this was about how do we reform now, how do we connect the people, how do we create a network of people resisting and reforming. So it's a duty to reform, it's not a duty to sit down and say, yes, good talk. You know, we can be consumers of good talks. Some of are, 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 are consumers of, you know, McDonald's and others of good talks. They say it's all consumer society. It's consumers. It's consumers. And this is why he was acting, you know, having all these people and, and being so powerful with his talk. He was also based on dealing with people, working at the grassroots level. So, uh, something which is important was he wanted the best for this country, but not only for this country, and this was the international network. And we have to get it right, and especially look at what is happening in the Middle East now. When the people are coming and they were in the streets, taking uh, in the streets for the name of freedom, and, and you know, the, 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 the trick here is if you become nationalistic, you fall into a trap. The only right Arab Spring will be to have South-South relationship. People not only talking about Tunisia for Tunisians and Egypt, Egypt for Egyptians, it's something which is... And for us here in the United States of America, it's not only to speak about an American struggle. To be, to feel something for your country, it's, it's something which is natural. And we have to uh, uh, value this. But sometimes a right feeling or a natural emotion end up being a wrong passion. A right emotion ending up being a wrong passion. Emotion is to feel for your country, that you like your country, and you, are, you have to be like that. You need to be true American citizens willing the best for this society, yes, but not being nationalistic and only thinking about America as the end of the struggle. And this is what we got at the end. The last three years was, no, it's beyond this. We don't want a black nation. We want international justice. And this is uh, the last message. And for me today, with all this, I would say, hearing and, and listening to some of the people, take it for, we have to take it for ourselves and to understand that we should not give up, that the struggle is still there, that we still have to make it clear that our struggle against racism is not a black business, is a universal business, is for the white, is for the Latinos, is for everyone, that we won't accept anything, anything which has to do with uh, racism and discrimination, that as Muslims we have to be clear, anti-Semitism is anti-Islamic. 
but we are not going to create a, a hierarchy between races, say it's very bad to be anti-Semitic, but it's acceptable to be Islamophobic or to be against black. No, never. No hierarchy. Racism is racist and we stand up. And if there is something which is important, we belong to these principles. This was the last message of Al-Hajj, Malik al We belong to our principles.